All right, now that I have this, I'm going to want to change the rigid body's velocity based on which of these keys I have. So I'm going to add in a speed variable that I can then alter later on. This is so that you only have to change it in one place if you decide to want to make it faster or slower. So that's going to go up there at the top. And then we're basically going to go grab the velocity out of our rigid body and update it to be the direction we want. So notice that there is a vector 2 up and a vector 2 right. There isn't a down or a left, and that's because you can just say negative to go in the other direction. So let's go make this public float speed. Public floating point speed. We're going to start at 16. And then here, we need the get component on the rigid body 2D with the open and close parentheses. Get component rigid body 2D open and close parentheses, and out of that rigid body we need to get the velocity. And then we're going to assign it, well, vector 2 up, we're actually not going to use the vector 3 part of it, that's actually 0 on that component. So vector 2 up times speed. Vector 2 dot up times speed. Actually, I just noticed that there is a down. Curious that they decided to do negative up. Oh well, we'll go with the tutorial. Rigid body 2D dot velocity vector 2 dot up. The negative of that times speed. And now we're going to do a similar thing with right and left. I'm getting tired of typing, so this is going to become right, and it is the positive right when we are going right, and this is going to be negative right. So up, negative up, right, negative right. And then we need to give it a default direction when we, when we first get started so that when the game first starts, you actually have the player moving in a direction. So we're just going to start it moving up. So I'm just going to grab this one for the up key and also put it into start. Save all that and let's test to make sure it works. All right, it's looking pretty good. Now that we have the player object, let's try adding on the light wall section where it leaves that trail of light walls behind us. To do this, we are going to create game objects, which are these walls, the wall prefabs. We are going to worry about the particular wall that we are on, because that's the one that we're actually going to stretch as we go. When we spawn a particular wall, what we're going to do is we're actually going to change its position and what's called its transform. So every object in the game has an x, a y, and a z position as far as a transform. They can have rotations and scalings as well, and we'll worry about scaling later on. First, let's add in these couple of things, our current wall and our wall prefab. So a game object, which is a generic object in our game. You might think of this as the generic version of all our objects that we put into our game. And this is going to be our wall prefab. We also need our current wall, which is going to be this Collider 2D wall. We're going to create a new method called spawn wall that's actually going to create one. It's going to use this instantiation and it's going to use the wall prefab, this game object here. It's going to use the current position of the player and then it's going to use this quaternion identity. 
this is basically a position in space. So if you imagine that you have to change the angle of things in space, that's what a quaternion does. It basically gives you the angles or rotations of a particular object. So we're just going to grab the basic one of these. So let's go ahead and create this spawn wall method. I could put it before start, in between the two, or after update. Just make sure that you put it before this closing brace, which matches all the way up here. So the basic way this works is that you have braces around the whole thing, and then each of the methods has their own. So now I'm going to do void spawn wall. Void spawn wall. It has parentheses like this to let it know that it is a method. It doesn't have anything in the parentheses, though. And then it has braces between those two. Next, I need to create this game object. And I'm just going to give it a generic name, this G. Game object G. And this is going to be a game object in parentheses is instantiate, which creates a new one of these things. Game object instantiate. And in the parentheses of instantiate, I'm going to have these things, the wall prefab, transform position, quaternion identity. Wall prefab. Transform dot position and quaternion identity. And a semicolon at the end. Now that I have one of these G objects, now I'm going to have the wall get that component, the collider of that thing. parentheses on the end of this. I'm going to save all this. So after creating this new game object, this new light wall, it will grab the Collider 2D and put it at a particular position, our current player's position, and say that it's the default rotation. It uses this prefab to create the generic properties of this particular object, and then we're basically going to save this as the wall so that we know what our current wall is. So now we need to take this wall prefab and drag the cyan light wall into it. So now down here in the script, assuming I haven't made any syntax errors, which would show up here or down here in the bottom at red if I did, I have this wall prefab. So now I need to take this light wall cyan and drag it here. So now that we have this update function which deals with our movement, we also need to spawn a wall after each one of these things. So we're going to call that method we just had. Spawn wall. Same thing with the others. So now, when we press play, we should see these little dots of light that show up because we haven't scaled any of these things properly. So every time we change direction, notice that it puts one of those in. Okay. 